Okay guys, welcome back. What we're going to look at today is uh, some wall warts. In particular, I really want to look at these. I, there's two basic kinds of wall warts. There's the ones based on transformers. They're usually a lot heavier and uh, they're usually very uh, low wattage. So if you look at this one, 3.7 volts at 340 milliamps, whereas uh, you know, the switching type, switch mode power supplies here are like much higher, nine volts at one amp. So you know, nine watts there versus one watt here. This is uh, seven and a half volts at one amp. So yeah, that's the way you usually tell them apart. You, basically by the weight and size uh, for the specific output. And these, these ones are handy enough too, and I may do a video on them as well, because uh, if you can get them apart, and this one's a nice little one, it comes apart quite easy, they're a good source of little transformers for making yourself some nice internal linear power supplies, which are inherently not very noisy. Whenever I get a chance to buy wall warts of either kind, I do, I got a, a big box of them and I keep them around for either pulling out the transformers or you know just just to use them for specific needs now they, they come in various voltages like this one's nine volts this one's seven and a half they come in 12 I've seen them in five there's lots of them in five um, and they may not be the voltage that you want so I mean, what do you want what are you going to do if you need an eight volt one or a ten volt one or something like that and you have a nine volt one well that, it's pretty easy I mean if you if you look here I got this uh, little schematic here. This is kind of very basic layout. Um, you'd need a few more components of what's here to actually make a real switch mode power supply. But basically what happens is, um, you know, you got a pulse width modulation controller here, switch on and off this transistor, and it tends to keep the pulse width kind of wide until the voltage here builds up to a certain level. And that level is the level that'll go through this LED and uh, down through the Zener diode. So once it gets up to the combined voltage of these, this will begin to emit light and that'll tell the pulse width modulation controller to narrow the width until this light goes off and then it'll widen the width again. So that's how these things close the loop on them here. Uh, so if you take the Zener diode and uh, you increase the Zener voltage or decrease the Zener voltage, you can change the output of your power supply very easily. And you can put another diode in, in the circuit like, like this like a silicon diode that'll give you 0.7 volts more on the output. Uh, so you can use combinations of zeners and, and diodes to get the kind of voltage that you want. Let's have a look at uh, the insides of a couple of these things here. I'm going to pull a couple of these apart and look inside them. Now these ones are nice in that they unscrew. Uh, most of the ones I have are like this, but I know there are some, I have a couple around that are not. They're kind of either clipped or cemented together. And those ones can be very difficult to get apart. Um, it's usually a destructive process. These are, like, for one thing, the case is not intended for this board. And if you look at this board here, it's actually um, not the brand name. There's no brand name on the outside here, but these are made by Aztec. And Aztec are a very good name in the power supply business. They've been around a long time and they've used to build Apple's power supplies for their Apple IIe. So they've been around for a long, long time. And what you'll see here, um, typically, like, so this here is the Zener diode that controls the voltage. And it's been cut. This diode here, I, I don't know if I ever trace that circuit back, but I think it's a, an over voltage protection diode. So it's another Zener. They've cut that out. And the reason for that is because they've increased the voltage. Like this, this is here is a 4.3 volt Zener. And they've taken that off and they put an 8.2 volt Zener in there. So the 4.3 volt Zener made this a 5 volt power supply module. So they turned it into a 9 volt. So you could theoretically make this a 5 volt again if you wanted just by putting this down, but you wouldn't have your over voltage protection anymore. These are just repurposed. Like they're, this board was not designed for this particular wall ward. It was designed for something else. They got a whole pot of them, I guess, in, in surplus and decided, oh, well, let's make 9 volt ones. And, uh, and that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going, I'm going to take this particular one and I'm going to, you know, make it some other voltage. I've got a couple of Zeners here. I've got a 5.1 and an 8.2. And I'll probably put them in series. And I want to get it up around about, I, I would estimate that probably with the forward voltage of the LED in here, you're going to be up around 14 or more volts with that combination. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to change out these capacitors here. So these capacitors need to be rated for at least 
that 14 volts and I have a 16 volt 220 and I have a 25 volt uh, 470 so I'll replace those capacitors too and clean up this mess a little bit and uh, but let's have a look inside this other one here yeah now you see this one here was actually board was actually made to fit into the slots in this case so let's uh, pull this out and have a look at this module to see if it's, it's there you go so while this one hasn't been modified or anything like that you can see it's a, it's a much less sophisticated power supply altogether uh, it too could be um, modified you can adjust this uh, TL431 to be whatever voltage you want so it's kind of a crummy design though it's not as nice as that Aztec so we'll leave this one alone for now although I may I have so many of these things I never use them for anything else I might just modify them maybe a, a future video see what we can do about that I'd have to reverse engineer that a little bit but that's easy enough okay so here we are so you can see here I've got these uh, two zeners in one following the other and uh, there's a 220 at 16 volts and the 470 at 25 volts there a little bit chunky but I think it's still with a little effort it's going to be able to fit into that because this this sponge block here is compressible I'll still be able to get that into the case so that's the wrong case let me see if I can get that into the case and then we'll uh, we'll try it out we'll put some uh, voltage on it and load it up and, but it, I would like to get the case on it um, just in case uh, things go awry if you know what I mean at least there'd be some protection there I'll be right back so here's the little diode that they had in there making that a 9 volt supply so let's see um, what voltage actually is and what I have here is a, a power supply up here with 14 volts on it um, I have it current limited to 10 milliamps I also have a, a, a little resistor here 1k ohm resistor so that will limit the current because the, you know these power supplies have output capacitors on them so it'll limit the current going through the zener here so I was a 8.8 .8 volt zener and that was giving a nominally 9 volt power supply okay here we are I've got the wall wart is plugged into the front of my bench here on a switched outlet and I have the Ryman meter here set up to measure voltage and I have the Kiwitz here to set up to measure current so we're going to first turn it on and see if it blows off I'm going to stand out of the way and I will see what happens okay yeah well my voltage prediction was pretty good I predicted about 14 volts to get 14.2 that's with no load on it so that I've got a little uh, load here I could turn on okay so we can see with a with a half amp load on it it's down to 13 volts but it seems to be holding its own and it doesn't feel like it's getting hot or anything like that no smoke's pouring out of it yet so it looks like we successfully changed the voltage of our little wall wart so you can actually take these things and play around with them and make them do whatever you want Okay, thanks guys for joining me, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.